Our next power-up is going to be a little bit more involved. If we open up the sprite power-up and check the edit sprite again, we can see that image 3, or the fourth image in our sequence, is the fireball. So to set this up, we're going to need some new sprites. First, we need a new sprite fireball. 24 by 24, the origin is centered, and precise collision checking. In the power-ups, I've also added a sprite hitbox, which is just a random color, it is 72 by 32, the origin is centered, and I've added a sprite explosion, which is an animated sprite with seven frames in it. You can see with the preview what it will do. That is 64 by 64, and the origin is centered. And then in the objects, I have created an object hitbox, which is not visible, and uses the sprite hitbox and then I've created an object explosion, which is visible. We aren't going to create a separate object for the fireball. We're just going to change the object ball sprite into the fireball sprite and change how it behaves whether it is in the fireball state or not. So open up the object ball again, and in the create event we are going to give the object ball a new variable. So come over to control and set variable, and I'm going to call this is underscore fireball and the value I'm going to give it instead of a number is false. A variable that has a value of true or false is called a boolean variable. So click OK and before we do anything more with the object ball let's open up the object power up again and let's set the behaviors in the object paddle collision for when it is a fireball power up. So underneath our decision 2 we have this else destroy instance that we put in last episode. And above the else we are going to put in a new test variable. So we can just select this, copy it, and with the else selected right click paste and it should paste right above the else. Let's change this decision from 2 to 3. Click OK. And since this is not affecting the paddle, but rather the ball, we can get rid of this change instance into object paddle. It has nothing to do with the paddle. And we will change the sprite into our sprite fireball. We also need to change what it applies to. In this case, other would be applying to the paddle, since this is happening in the paddle collision and self applies to the power-up. To get it to affect the ball, we actually now have to check this object, and we can specify which object we want it to apply to. So now we will select our object ball, so that when a fireball power-up hits the paddle, it will change the ball sprite into the sprite fireball. We also want to change the ball's isFireball variable to true, so come back to control, set variable, and drag that above the destroy instance, we will make it apply to our object ball and the variable is underscore fireball the value will be true. Click OK and now we can close the power up window and go back to our object ball. We now go into our collision with object brick 1 and we now need to set up the actions for when our object ball hits a brick and is a fireball we are going to make it so that the fireball not only destroys the brick that it hits, but also all of the bricks surrounding it. So first we need to make sure whether or not it is in fact a fireball. So let's come back to our control and test for variable. And we are going to drag it underneath this block here that creates our power up chance. And we are checking to see if the variable is underscore fireball is equal to true. I'm going to drag some blocks underneath that because if it is we need multiple things to happen. First we're going to turn the fireball back into a regular ball. So we're going to come to set variable and we are going to set is underscore fireball to false because we don't want the fireball still bouncing around destroying everything on screen. Click OK and then we need to change our sprite back to normal. So in main one, find our sprite and set the sprite back to sprite ball. 
both of our change sprite and set variable are this time set to self because we are working within the object ball. Now, you remember that hitbox object that we made at the beginning of the episode. Well, that hitbox is actually what we're going to use as a quick and easy way to destroy all of the other bricks surrounding the brick that gets hit in our collision. Rather than destroy the brick that we collide with, we're actually going to change that into our hitbox. The hitbox is slightly larger than the brick, so it will touch all of the ones surrounding it. We'll have to set up the actions and events for the hitbox a little bit later for anything to actually happen. But for right now, come over to our objects under the main one tab and select this change instance. Drag it underneath our change sprite. And we need to apply this to other, which is the object one brick, because we are going to change that brick into our object hitbox and we want the events to be performed. This is also where our explosion is going to come in handy as it will cover up the fact that suddenly a bunch of bricks just disappear. So come up to objects in the main one tab, create instance, drag that underneath our change instance. We will apply this to other because we want the brick to create the explosion. The object is our object explosion. Set the x and y to zero which will be the center of the brick, and relative. Click OK. And then the final thing we want to do is come over to Control, Else, and drag that above the Destroy instance. We don't want to destroy the brick if the fireball is true, because remember, we are changing the brick into our object hitbox. Without this Else, it would go through all of this and then just destroy it anyway. By putting in Else, it's only going to destroy the brick if it is not a fireball. And real quick to see what's happening, I'm going to open up the object power up, and you don't have to do this, but in the create event where we choose sub-image for our decision variable, I'm just going to take this out and turn it into three so that I can ensure every power up will be a fireball, and then I'm going to open up the hitbox and make it visible. Then I'm going to test the game. So our first power up should be a fireball. You can see the ball changed, and now you see what's going on over there. We have this green box and it is touching the surrounding bricks. We're going to use that collision to make the surrounding bricks disappear. So close that, close that, and I'm going to turn visibility off on the hitbox and change my variable decision back to choose 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Okay, so we can close our object ball properties, and you saw that when the explosion was created, it just kept cycling through the animation and stayed on screen. We don't want that, so let's open up our object explosion, and in the events, we are going to add event, other, and come down to animation end. Our explosion sprite had seven frames in it, and this event will trigger when it gets to the last one. When it gets to the end, we want to destroy the explosion and get it off screen. So come over to main one, destroy instance, apply it to self, OK. And that should take care of the explosion. So click OK. And then finally, we need to make the hitbox destroy all of the other bricks that it touches. So open our object hitbox, and we will add event, collision, and find our object brick 1. Again, because this is a parent of all the others, it will also apply to all the others. So we only need brick 1, and we will just destroy it. So come over to main 1, destroy instance, applied to self, sorry, applied to other, because we are affecting the object brick. Click OK. And we don't want our object hitbox to stay on screen, so we have to destroy it as well. But we want to give it a little bit of time to make sure that all of the collisions run properly and destroy all the instances. So we're going to set up a timer. First we'll start with add event, create, come over to main 2, set alarm. We will give 5 steps to alarm 0, and then we will add event, alarm, alarm 0, come over to main 1, destroy instance, self. So it gives it just that fraction of a second before the hitbox disappears that allows GameMaker to cycle through all of the possible collisions and ensure that everything happens as it should. So now we should be able to test this. 
and hopefully I can get an explosion early on. We see that the shrinking and expanding power-ups work. There's a ball, and boom! It explodes and destroys everything. Now, I've only got it so that it sets up the one explosion animation. Basically giving the impression that the ball itself has exploded. But if you really wanted to, you could set it up so that each brick has its own miniature explosion. But I find that that just puts too much on screen and just really makes it kind of a mess. But So it does work. All of our power-ups work. Again, I did not get my hands on one of the reset power-ups. Let's see if I can get the last bricks to give me one. Ah, there it is, and it sets my paddle back to normal. So now we have ensured that all of our power-ups so far work, and I win. Okay. And we've got a little bit of a bug here where our lives are carrying over. That is because we made the life counter persistent, so when it's cycling back around to the title screen, it's still drawing the lives on screen. The way we get rid of that is just reopening our life counter object and turning off persistent, and then just putting in a life counter in every single level. That might not be the most efficient way to do it. We could also set up like a level counter, and so once it saw that it got to a certain level or got to the win screen or lose screen, it would then destroy the object life counter. A number of things we could do. This video was about setting up the fireballs, and we have successfully done that. So in the next video, we'll look at setting up another advanced power-up. It'll be the laser paddle.